Hello once again everyone and welcome to Cruznik Sanctuary. I'm your host Cruznik X. Unfortunately the gang can't join me on this aspect of things because they're kind of all busy with their own thing. Um, but they're with me in spirit. At least I hope. Any hoozy. We're once again playing Final Fantasy XIV and Walker, the newest expansion in the Final Fantasy XIV saga. In the last episode, we took out, we uh, defeated the blasphemy in Vanaspati, and man, was it ugly! But we also discovered that these blasphemies are basically deprived are just totally drained of ether. When they die, they don't return to the ethereal sea. And these are pe these are actual flesh and blood people who are transforming. The final days truly is upon us, folks. And it is frightening to think about. Anyway, let's continue on and speak to Ahewan and complete the next quest, The Blasphemy Unmasks. Wait, hold up. Okay, let's... <laughs> Forgive me, my friends, but I must return to Megadota for the time being. There I can bend in manage this crisis and dispatch my troops as the situation demands. In that case, we shall carry out an investigation of our own here in the city. Mayhap the residents can tell me more about the first of the transformations, and the conditions under which it occurred. If we can ascertain what exactly triggered these tragic events, it may give us some insight as to a possible solution. Time is of the essence. Let us split into three groups that we may cover more ground. Alice and I will see the Pax's path. Then Crit and Yishtola, pray, make for the for Dharma. I leave Arthur to Graha and you, Chris. Any information you can gather on the first blasphemy or the manifestation of the final days here in the city would be most helpful. When we have completed our respective inquiries, let us reconvene in front of the Megaduta, that we might share what we've learned with the Satrap. Let's do it. All right, let's speak with Graha. Shall we be off then? Arthur is home to the High Crucible of Alchemia, whose alchemists forged many of our warning scales. That seems as good a place as any to begin our investigation, don't you think? I spoke briefly with Nuhadin, the chief alchemist there, on our last visit. He should be happy to answer our queries. Graha Tia is now accompanying you, and yeah. I don't need a constant reminder every time I... But let's make it a double time, eh? There's the summoning bell. I can't wait till I'm actually using my retainers again. Right now, I'm just focused on trying to get through this story. There's a lot to uncover here. Anyway, let us speak with Nuhadin. Ah, I remember those red eyes. You were with those scions who commissioned the scales from us, yes? I welcome you back to the High Crucible. What brings you here in these troubling times? We are assisting the satrap in investigating the crisis that plagues the city. Did you happen to catch any sight of the creatures? I did. As I was going about my work, I was disturbed by a crashing footstep so powerful that the very ground shook. I rushed outside and could not believe what I beheld. The night sky was burning. Suddenly, I heard panic screams coming from the direction of Balshan Bazaar. 
In the next instant, a monstrous beast poked its head out from amidst the stalls. A handful of the Radiant rushed to the scene, only to be sent sprawling as the Fiend and its minions propelled themselves skyward. So, the blasphemy came from the vicinity of the markets. This knowledge may prove useful. I thank you for sharing your tale. Well, I do believe we now know where we should inquire next. To the bu- to the bazaar, then. Yeah, that was tough. To the bazaar. Can I drive in here? Nope. This way? Yep. East Balsan Hazar. A bazaar. Oh. Oh. What now? So, this is the Fnarian Weave. I must say it bears a resemblance to the traditional fabrics of Corvos. Small wonder, really, given that it's just across the water. Not that I am much of an expert in Kovalsi culture, of course. I've not had the occasion to visit my ancestral home since coming to Shalian, and like as not, I will never reside there again. That said, in recent days, I felt more acutely aware of my heritage and grateful for it. It is thanks to my forebears that I inherited the royal eye, and with it, the wisdom of ancient Alag. And so, well, I simply hope that my countrymen are safe. And one day, when this calamity is but a memory, I would like to see Corvos again. If only once. Okay. Forgive me, but my shop's closed until further notice. Needless to say, we've more pressing concerns these days. We have come not in search of wares, but information concerning the enormous fiend that tore through the bazaar. Did you present, perchance, witness anything? Afraid not, my friend. I was here the whole time, so I only saw its little minions. Made a mess of the place they did. While that was all going on, the great big one tore through the west side of the bazaar. You'd have better luck asking there. Alright, so we gotta go to the western side. Before we talk to this guy, is there any... Oh, there are three... Okay, let's, uh... There aren't any additional things, but... Let's talk to this guy. Is something the matter, Traveler? If you are lost, perhaps I could be of assistance. Your offer is most appreciated. We are not lost, but we are in need of information. Might you know anything about the gargantuan beast that rampaged through the bazaar? Aye, I saw it all. Oh, I wish I had not. I was going about my work when all of a sudden a piercing scream cut through the air. I turned around, and there was the fiend, its massive body bursting through that entryway with the force of a tidal wave. And then it was gone as quickly as it came. Alright, let's speak with Radvira. Sisters have mercy. What is happening to the world? What am I to do? Is nowhere safe? Settle down, friend. The danger has passed. At least for now. If it's not too painful to remember, could you tell us what you saw? First I heard the screams. Then a horde of ravening bees came charging towards us. One of them was huge. Bigger than a married, throwing people about like ragdolls. And it was eating them! I heed, under a counter, saw others do the same. But the shrieking and wailing kept getting louder. More voices in the throng. Beasts or victims I couldn't tell. I knew not what was happening. I still don't. That, that is enough, my good man. You are brave enough to share with us your tale. Many of your fellow merchants are safe. The High Crucible, too, has survived mostly unscathed. 
Pray, stay close to your friends and loved ones, and rest your body and mind while you are able. I suspect this is the most we can expect the people here to tell us. I think it's best we find a place outside the bazaar where we might rest and renew our findings. Oh, review, I should have said. But... All right, here we are. That, that's review. Judging by their accounts, the transformation had already occurred by the time the beast reached the bazaar. It tore through the west side of the bazaar and headed towards the Etherite Plaza. In other words, the blasphemy may have first appeared in this vicinity. That being the cause, the people in that mayhem, mayhem, may, is it mayhane or mayhem? Yeah, well, can surely tell us more. Well, we can attune to the Ethernet at least. Merid's Mehain. Going off to that enormous beast, are you? Aye, I saw it. Including the very instant that poor bastard transformed. Damn the gods for putting me there! It started over there by the window. A few men. Merchants, probably, talking and drinking. Conversation must have taken a turn for the worst. Next thing I know, their leader, I suppose he was, buries his hand in, head in his hands, and black mist was swirling about him. Then his whole body burst apart, and there was, and there stands a hideous slavering beast, massive and foul, all gawping maws and bulging eyes. His friends start shrieking, then the black mist comes again, until the change takes them too. Stuff of nightmares, I tell you. <laughs> Nightmarish indeed. Incidentally, do you perchance know who those merchants were? No, I'm a decorator by trade. Not much cause to mingle with their sort. Saw me, Le Saw me Leo the barmaid chatting with them though. She might know something. Alright, where's Melio the barmaid? Oh, there she is. But let's talk with the other guy. Or gal. Even after repairing all that damage, it'll take a while for business to pick up again. You mean the blasphemy? That's what the Radiant have been calling it anyway. I saw it too. We all did. I was standing here at the counter as Meride poured me a drink, when suddenly there came this dreadful sound like a pained, angry groan. It was unlike anything I ever heard. I turned around in shock and from an ominous cloud of black mist that rose the creature, enormous and ghastly to behold. As for what happened next, to recall it since shivers up my spine. By some stroke of fortune, I was able to slip outside before the beast got its claws on me. But the sight that greeted me offered no solace. The blue sky above turned red as blood. Merid, myself, and the other survivors clung to each other for dear life until the radiant horse came to our aid. Wait, did I hear you correctly? The beast manifested before the sky began to burn. I'm certain of it. The windows here offer a clear view of the sky, and I saw nothing out of the ordinary until the beast appeared and began to rage. All right, let's talk. Let's talk with Malil. Oh, hello there. Welcome to Malil's Mehane. What can we get you? We have come not for libations, but rather information. You are Malil, yes. We are investigating the so-called blasphemy on the satrap's behalf. We hear it was one of your customers. A merchant that first underwent the transformation. What can you tell us about him? He... he was something of a regular here. Especially of late. 
Karzal was his name. He ran his own consortium, dealing primarily in the exports of Thavnarian specialties. Karzal. It's through him we met Matsya. Yes, the names ring a bell. Didn't you meet them both on your first trip to Thavnir? If I recall correctly, Karzal ran a trading operation in Yedlamad, and it was there that you made Matsya's acquaintance. Yes, that is the same Karzal, no doubt. A rather successful man, from what I gather. That said, it was clear that he had fallen on hard times of late. Those ghastly towers popping up everywhere cannot have been good for business. Even now, with the towers gone, the collapse of the Empire has led to all sorts of problems elsewhere. The market for luxuries is surely not what it once was. Trying times for the head of the trading consortium, indeed. Kazan was a compassionate man. Even as his own business suffered, he did what he could to provide for the artisans, fishermen, and many others who counted on him to sell their wares. Indeed, that was the very topic of yesterday's meeting, as far as I could hear. Yet, as they discussed matters further, Karzal's tone grew grave and grim. It was then that... that... Forgive me. I would not have you recall the memory if it brings you pain. If I could, I would ask just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual about Karzal in particular? Please... Anything at all. Sorry. Nothing springs to mind. Perhaps someone else can help you. Karzal lived for his work and had no family that I know of. His employees and associates knew him best, but they too are lost to us. Still, perhaps his neighbors know something I do not. I can direct you to them if you believe it would help. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Let's find them. Is Graha still following me? No? Cool. All right. No triple triad for me, so we might as well keep going. Karzal made his home in Kama, a nearby residential area. From what I gather, Karzal lived there since childhood and was known throughout the neighborhood. Kama. The name is new to me. How do we get there? I'll write down some directions. I cannot promise that you will find what you seek there, but if nothing else, it is a start. Come, let's see where this lead takes us. Alright, where are we going? Okay. We can't go to Aetherite Plaza because we're gonna have to... What's up, Graha? Let's see. After leaving the Mahane, we are to, we're to retrace our steps and head back towards the Etherite Plaza. Okay. Either way, it takes us to where we want to go, but... Okay, now where? Alright, Graha, now where? From that, from here, we ascend the stairs. Okay. Okay. 
up to you. Okay, we can't go that way, so up this way. All right. Ah, this must be huge. In which case, we should take the path leading southeast. Okay. Alright, here. Alright. This way good? If we keep going this way, we should arrive in Kama before long. Walking these unfamiliar streets is quite the adventure, is it not? I can only hope that we can explore Radzat Han at our leisure once this crisis is over, is past. Yeah, well, let's focus on that when the crisis has passed. Alright, Graha. And this must be Kama. We've arrived at last. Let us begin by question let us begin questioning the residents without delay. No doubt someone here can tell us more about Kalzal. Given recent events, I imagine many are taking shelter indoors. Alright, first let's attune to the Ethernet. Could you come back another time? I just woke up and I'm not exactly in the mood for idle chit chat. Well, that's one way to avoid the panic, I suppose. Pardon our intrusion. You may not have noticed, but a great danger has come to Thavna. I encourage you to stay alert and prepare to flee the city should the situation turn dire. But before we leave you in peace, pray allow us to ask a question or two. Did you know a local merchant named Karzong? If so, did you notice anything unusual about him recently? Kazal? Aye, I know him. In fact, we spoke just the other day. Like many others, his business was doing poorly. Still, it seemed as though he'd managed to turn things around, thanks to a generous order from Rudveda Fibers. Why, he was practically dancing in the streets. I haven't spoken with him since, but I assume all went well. Gina Baha might be able to tell you more, though. As I recall, he was the one who brokered the arrangement. Gina Baha had root Hudveda fibers. Let's make a point to visit him after we've spoken with the other locals. Man, they are throwing a lot of tongue twisters at me. Marty? Kaza, you'll say? Yes, I've known him since he was a boy. If there was ever a man who was born to be a merchant, it was him. Always early to depart and late to return, he'd spend his days procuring the finest wares and seeking out willing customers. You could say it came to him as easily as breathing. Sadly, business was flagging of late. No surprise, really, what with how dangerous travel has become. He was cooped up in his house from dawn until dusk the other day. No doubt racking his brain for a way to turn his fortunes around. Then at night I heard the door open. I looked out to see Kazal sitting on a bench, his head hung low. A man with the weight of the world on his shoulders. I see. The situation must have been a dire one indeed. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing to speak of. Other than the troubles with his consortium, he was the same old Kazal, cordial and honest as always. These questions you are asking, has something happened to him? He wasn't caught up in that terrible incident at the Bizarre, was he? I don't travel much these days, but my daughter told me not to venture outside. Stuck in here as I am, I have heard little about Bizarre goings-on. Rest assured the city is safe for now. 
but the situation may change without warning. I urge you, stay close to your daughter, and be prepared to take refuge should the satrap order it. All right, we got to speak with Gina Baha. Can we just hop the fence? Let's see if he'll follow me. That is a hard no. Uh, do I have to go back to... Yeah, I have to go back to... Kama. He's like a little lost kitten sometimes. Or wait. Where in the frick is he? Oh, he's back at Mavides. Or Mavides. Mavides. Why didn't you just hop the frickin' fence? You know, it's like, I'm down for, you know, running the gamut here, but seriously. There is something to be said for, you know, jumping a fence or two. Kinda sucks he can't just use the etherite. Was there any other things besides going across that big ass fence or uh, long bridge? Nope. Okay. All right. So we go here. You gonna give me directions, Graha? Or if I'm not mistaken, these stairs lead to Dharma. It is quite the sight, the red sky above. During the final days of yore, the heavens burned and the stars fell. Creation magics run amok. That was my assumption when I saw Amarat. Perhaps the ancients believed the same, that the terror of a single powerful individual was the cause of their calamity. And yet, those self-same horrors now manifest themselves before our eyes. What could it be that sets the heavens aflame and turns ordinary men into beasts? One can only guess at this point. What's, in, what's up? They're farming silkworms. This must be Rudveda fi Fibers. We, where we should find Jinabaha. Yeah, thank you. Can you put that in a... Can you put that in a memo and file it under shit I already knew? 
There she is. And hurry, I say! There's no time in hurry, I say! There's no time to waste! Pardon me, but you are in charge of buying and selling here, yes? We have a few questions that we'd like to... I'm sorry, but I simply don't have time to chat. If you haven't noticed, we have our hands full at the moment. We must carry all our wares and equipment to safety before those accursed beasts return. In that case, might we be of assistance? Perhaps we could speak when the job is done. Very well. You can start by helping us move our equipment. Ask the others what to put where. And you can carry our fabrics. Go through that door and speak with Kamala. She'll tell you the rest. Remember, these textiles are our livelihood. Handle them with care. Will do. This area is for employees only. Out! Out! What's that? You've come to help? Oh, please! Please be to me, Druva! Kind stranger, I welcome your assistance. On your way here, you passed three storehouses, yes? I'd like you to carry that small crate into Nabrifal, by the storehouse near the hatchery. The crate of clothing is for Anur. And that massive crate there goes to Zemira by the middle storehouse. Watch your back with that one. Those are all crates we have ready. Once they have been delivered, consider your work here complete. You will have a limited time to complete the task should you fail return. Okay. Um. Oh, here's the crate. Alright, the light crate... By the storehouse near the hatchery. Here he is. That is it. Then you'll come to the right place. We thank you for your aid. Alright. Now the ordinary quarry. This is the crate of clothing. Manuha. If you have any crates of finished products such as carpets, clothing, and the like, pray bring them here into our primary storehouse. A crate full of clothing, is it? I can take that off your hands. Many thanks for the delivery. And now this weighty crate. I say, you're quite the brawny one, aren't you? Good thing. Never know when you'll need to defend yourself in these unpredictable times. A crate full of fabrics, is it? Exactly what I was hoping to receive. Here, let me put that away for you. Alright, done and done. You've carried all the crates to the storehouses, you say? And so quickly, too. Why, I've never seen anyone so strong. I and my associates will see to the rest, so please, return to Jinabaha and assure him that our, our work is a proceeding apace. To tell the truth, we're grateful for this distraction. Too many terrible happenings of late. But generous souls like yourself give me hope that we may emerge from this trial even stronger. I pray we meet again in more peaceful times. Definitely. Now then. 
done as I asked, have you? If Kamala is satisfied with your work, then so am I. You have done us a great favor, Traveler. I too have delivered the instruments and apparatus entrusted to me. You will both have my thanks. With our wares safely stored away, we'll not lose any more to those fiends. I take it that your establishment did not escape the attack on Skane. We did not. Thankfully, most of our workers had already left for the day, but those of us still here saw it all. We looked to the burning skies in confusion, and then, before we could even begin to make sense of it, a hideous creature burst from the, through the doors, shrieking. We ran for our lives, but one of my colleagues was not so fortunate. He cried out, a scream of such agony, such terror, and in the next instant, he too sprouted fearsome claws. The sight of it caused another fellow to panic, and then he too transformed. I'm sorry, there was something you wanted to ask? Indeed. You knew the merchant Kalzal, did you not? I believe he had some dealings with your establishment. Kalzal? I know him well. We'd arranged for his consortium to deliver a large shipment of fabrics, but in the end, we received a better author and had to turn him down. I understand his business is struggling, but so is ours. Another of our most reliable trading partners agreed to transport the goods for a much smaller commission, and we he have been forced to, we'd have been forced to refuse. I felt terrible for withdrawing the offer. But you must understand, we simply had no choice. He tried to put on a brave face when I delivered the news, but his dejection and despair was, were as plain as day. He said he'd discuss it with his associates, but I could tell he'd all but given up hope. Dejection and despair. You remember what we saw in Vanaspati, yes? Soldiers and jungle dwellers pushed to the very brink, turning into beasts, one after the next. It would seem the same phenomenon occurred here. The poor craftsmen attacked by the fiends, as well as those that witnessed it, all undergoing the same change. I suspect that everything began with Kalzal. By all accounts, it was he who suffered from the most profound and piercing despair. Wait, could that be it? That such intense emotions were that what triggered his transformation? It's possible. Much remains unclear, but I believe we're drawing closer to an answer. At any rate, we must discuss our findings with the others. And we will do that in the next episode. If you're watching on Twitch or live from PlayStation, stay tuned. If you're watching on YouTube... Here are all the links you need to get to where you need to go. Until then, we'll see you next time.